Now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. The Phil Harris Alice May Show this hour, as it was originally broadcast back on November 26, 1950. Phil and Remley were going to go to the big game, but... From Hollywood, the Phil Harris Alice May Show... For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. Yesterday, there was a big football game between UCLA and UCLA. I mean, USC. (laughs) Bill and Frankie had two tickets for the game, but they never got to see it. Let's go back to yesterday and find out why. Oh, I can't wait to see that game today. Aren't you excited, Curly? Sure, I'm excited. Naturally, it's going to be a honey. Takes me back to the days when I used to play for my college. What college did you go to, Daddy? Uh... Takes me back to the days when I used to play for my high school. What high school did you go to, Daddy? Takes me back to the days when I was the best fullback Carlton Myers kindergarten ever had. (laughs) Uh, I was known in those days as Twinkle Toes Harris. (laughs) The way I used to tightrope down the sidelines, ah, it was a pretty thing to behold. Ain't that right, Remley? If you say so. (laughs) For a substitute water boy, you weren't bad. Now, but kids, if you want to see class, you should have seen me. Rump along Remley, they call me. Did you and Daddy play together? We sure did. Let me tell you about it, kids. You see, we... Hey, wait a minute. Now, let me tell them. They're my kids. But, Curly, this week it's my turn to do the lying. <laughs> it is not. You had your turn last week when you told them about the time you hit the three home runs in the World Series. I know, but how about the week before when you swam the English Channel? <laughs> No hands We don't care who tells us But one of you start talking And this time, make it good Yeah Last week it was so corny We had a tough time keeping a straight face Don't worry, this is gonna be a good one (laughs) This happened in the Rose Bowl (laughs) The opposing team kicked off Frankie and I stood on the goal line Waiting to receive the ball Frankie caught it Handed it off to me and I started up the field Curly Ten yards, twenty yards I stiff arm one play Curly Sidestepped two others and continued past the midfield strike Three tacklers converged on me but I bowled them over Curly Continued down the field I got down to the thirty, to the twenty, the ten Four tacklers jumped on me but I carried them over the goal line To score the winning touchdown Curly What do you want? You'll have to come back, I forgot to hand you the ball <laughs> If you forgot to give me the ball, what was I carrying under my arm? Your other head. (laughs) What kind of story is that to tell him? You kids better run along. Your father ain't in very good form today. Okay, I've heard enough anyway. Me too. Come on, Phyllis. Let's go down to the corner and have a beer. Yeah, you kids... What? (laughs) You're going down to the corner for a what? A root beer. See you later, Daddy. <laughs> Ooh, had me scared for a minute. <laughs> hey, did you get the tickets for the game, Curly? Yeah, we're supposed to pick them up at the box office. Hey, we we're lucky to get these two seats. Phil, what were you two fellas telling the girls about your having played football? I wish you wouldn't fib to them. What fib? We did play football, didn't we, Frankie? Of course we did. I'll never forget the time I starred in the Rose Bowl at Pasadena. It was on New Year's Day, and I zigzagged all over the field, avoiding tacklers. Isn't that right, Curly? Yeah, with a few corrections. (laughs) The zigzag you were doing. (laughs) But it 
wasn't New Year's Day, it was New Year's Eve. <laughs> and it wasn't the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, it was the hotel lobby in Milwaukee. <laughs> the only guy trying to tackle you was the house detective. <laughs> hey, Alice, he wasn't the star of that game, I was. Which game? The one in Pasadena or the one in Milwaukee? The one in Pasadena. <laughs> Oh, uh, that was that day I made them 12 touchdowns. They couldn't lay a hand on me in small wonder. Uh, in those days, I had the speed and grace of a gazelle. Gazelle, you say? Let's forget this small talk and let's have lunch before we go. Alice, I'll have a ham and cheese sandwich on white toast. And I don't want no tomato on the sandwich. Instead of tomato, I want sliced pickle in the sandwich. <laughs> and I want the toast light and warm. Anything to drink, Your Highness? Uh, yeah, I'd like some coffee. No cream, two and a half lumps of sugar. Would you like it served in bed? No, on a saucer, like I always have. Never. <laughs> We'll fix our own lunch And we better do it now If we want to get to that game in time Oh, Phil, I meant to tell you You won't have to go to the game Won't have to What do you mean? I have a surprise for you You can see the game at home I bought you a television set Alice <laughs> I told you never to mention that word In my house <laughs> I am a radio man and we of radio refuse to acknowledge this Johnny-come-lately. <laughs> Bill, television is a wonderful form of entertainment, and it's here to stay. Bah, humbug, and balderdash. <laughs> and if you needed a dash of poppycock, too. <laughs> Gee whiz, entertainment, she says. It's nothing but stereoptican slides with the shakes. <laughs> How would you know? You never gave television a fair trial No, but I've given the shakes a test <laughs> When TV first came out We had a set here for a full evening And what did they show? Puppets, wrestling, old cowboy pictures And beautiful dames with low-cut gowns Yeah, beautiful dames with low... <laughs> what kind of a set you got, Clyde? <laughs> They have some wonderful shows on television today Educational programs like Shakespearean dramas Child psychology, political forums Ina Ray Hutton and Dagmar <laughs> They're educational Depends on what you're studying Bill, why are you so dead set against television? Well, I don't think it's ready yet Ah, uh, let's face it, Curly You're just sore because you can't get a job in the media Nobody wants you on television What does that prove? Nobody wants me on radio either, but I'm on it <laughs> I think I could have picked a better way to prove my point <laughs> Hey, where's the set, honey? Well, I sent Willie out to buy one He's such a shrewd shopper I think you'll change your mind when you watch some of the programs, Phil All right, all right, so I'll give it another chance Hey, Remley Yeah? Call the Coliseum and cancel our tickets Okay Honey, honey, I know you'll like television once you get used to it There are some wonderful artists on television Good comics, dramatic stars And some of the female singers are beautiful Beautiful. Are you kidding, honey? They won't see anything until they've seen you. Oh. That's when they're going to see it. Because you're my idea of a beautiful singer. Oh, thank you, dear. I... Wait a minute. What are you leading up to? The same thing you're leading up to, your song. Thank you, dear. Well, well. While Alice sings her song, we'll take a quick break. November 26, 1950, the Phil Harris Alice Space Show on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Alice has finished her song, so back to the Phil Harris Alice Space Show, November 26, 1950. Curly, I canceled the tickets. You know, I've just been thinking it probably will be better to watch the game on television than to go out there. Oh, of course it will. I told Willie to buy a set with a large 21-inch screen. 21-inch? Uh-huh. Hey, that'll make it almost lifelike. 
You know, Ramley, huh? that'll be great for watching them line plays. You see, when they well, start... Here going... I am, everybody. I bought the set. Oh, Willie, you dove you. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Where is it, kid? Right here under my arm. Under your... <laughs> under your arm? What kind of a set did you get? Alice told you to get a 21-inch screen. Oh, nonsense. The size of the screen is unimportant. This is the best second-hand portable set that money can buy. Oh, that was a present for Phil. Why did you have to buy a portable set? And a second-hand one at that. I don't think you should keep sinking money in this husband of yours. <laughs> it's like pounding sand into a rat hole. <laughs> Besides, this has a good-sized screen. I'll open the cabinet door and show you. There. <laughs> How do you like it? Take it back. It's damaged. It is not. Then what's that small piece of adhesive tape right in the center for? <laughs> That's the screen. <laughs> Oh, goody. <laughs> we get to see Faye Emerson in a plunging Band-Aid. <laughs> hey, Willie, how can you be so cheap buying a set like that? Hey, Remley, take a look at that thing. Have you ever seen anything like that? Anything that small in your life? Not since you gave me my last paycheck. Oh. <laughs> well, be sarcastic, fellows. You get a, a, a wonderful picture on this set. I'll just plug it in and show you. There. Now I'll just turn it on, adjust the picture. There we are. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. Uh, let me see it. You'll have to get in line, honey. All this thing can handle is one eye at a time. <laughs> now, Philip, look at that nice large picture. You couldn't get a better... A be oh, dear, there's something mechanically wrong. The picture blacked out. Oh, I'll fix it, Willie. There. Oh, the picture's back, Philip. How did you do it? It was easy. I just brushed the fly off the screen. <laughs> can't watch a football game on this screen. We'll all go blind. <laughs> Come on, Remley. We're going to the Coliseum and see that game. We can't, Curly. When I canceled the tickets, they said there were no more available. Oh, well, we can't get tickets, and now we can't see it on television. We can still see it on television. How? All you have to do is go out and buy a 21-inch screen. Uh, they're very expensive. Now, if you know where to go, I can get one a lot cheaper. Now, where are you going to get one cheaper? I know a guy. Ow! <laughs> Follow me, Curly. All right, I'll... Well, here we are, Curly. Just wait till you see my friend's merchandise. This is one of the swankiest house furnishing stores in the city. Yeah, nice location, too. Right next door to the city dump. <laughs> it's ideal. Gives him a chance to pick up a lot of unusual items. <laughs> Sounds like an enterprising fellow. Oh, he is. Where do you meet him? Hiya, Grogan. Well, Frankie, hiya, pal. <laughs> you too, Harris. Good to see you. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, bud, ain't you the guy who was in the counterfeiting business and wanted to sponsor me on the air? The same. I hated to give that business up, but I had to. The government complained. <laughs> Oh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> Jealousy. <laughs> I was turning out better stuff than they were. <laughs> I made a five-dollar bill that was a doll. <laughs> Your money was that good, huh? Well, I ain't one to brag, but once the banks handled my stuff, they refused to carry that inferior merchandise the Treasury was handing out. <laughs> a question of time before the government went bankrupt, so being a good American, I stepped out. <laughs> that was a patriotic gesture. Yeah, yeah. Harry was very grateful. <laughs> Gave me a presidential citation and an autographed record of Margaret singing The Thing. <laughs> What can I do for you? <laughs> I'd like to hear the record. <laughs> hey, look, Grogan, I want to buy something, but uh, before I do, are you sure that this is a legitimate business? Well, naturally, this is a legitimate business. 
If it wasn't, how could I display all this merchandise out in the open here? Everything you see here was bought on the level. There's pianos, refrigerators, lamps, end tables. There ain't a hot piece on this floor. <laughs> now, what do you want? Well, I want to see a television set. Follow me. <laughs> wait, wait, what are you doing? Opening a trap door to the hot goods department. <laughs> Come on. Now, wait a minute. You might as well hold it because I ain't buying those stolen goods. Mr. Harris, I resent your straight-laced attitude. <laughs> I do business with all the big stars And I got some wonderful sense Well, I got to admit that You do have some beautiful merchandise <laughs> That's a nice looking set over there Well, it should be It was custom made for Bing Crosby <laughs> How'd you get it? Well, me and a couple of friends We were visiting Bing one night I casually mentioned That's a lovely set you got there I'd like to have one like it Bing said, if you want the set, take it Bing told you to take it just like that? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Two guys with me were so surprised they almost dropped their guns. <laughs> you stole that set from Bing? Oh, Everett's gonna hate you. <laughs> Look, Grog, I told you I don't want to buy no stolen goods. Well, all right, if you're gonna be picky youn about it. I got a set right here that belonged to Jack Benny Now, Jackson bought a new one for me Turn this one in and I can let you have it at a very good price I don't know Don't look very modern to me Well, it may not look modern, but just wait you see this thing wake Just wait a minute, I'll tune it in for you Well, what are you reaching inside the set for? So I can get the cat's whisker in a good spot on the crystal <laughs> Oh, fine a crystal television set <laughs> It's the latest thing The picture's great And just will you hear the reception on this Here, put these earphones on <laughs> You mean I gotta listen to this with earphones? Well, naturally Now you put the earphones on While I turn the crank <laughs> What's the crank for? You want the pictures to move, don't you? <laughs> Grogi, you may think that I'm a hard man to please, <laughs> but I don't believe I want this set. I don't blame you, Curly I've come to the conclusion that you shouldn't buy a set Then how are we going to see the game? We'll buy a kit and build our own set <laughs> Build our own with a kit? Now that appeals to me Buying a kit is cheaper anyway Sure Once we get the set built, it'll be just like being at the game We'll see all the plays And at halftime, we'll see the card stunts And hear the band playing And those college kids singing And we'll... Holy smoke, Frank Thanks for reminding me Of what? I haven't sung yet <laughs> What's that? Automatic pitch pipe Uh-huh <laughs> Fellas, do you mean you're going to try to build your own television set out of that kit? Sure, it'll be a cinch There's only 2,784 parts to put together <laughs> Certainly, and we have each part numbered and all laid out in the line And then we got Willie and the kids helping us But do you have to have the parts spread out all over like that? Well, they're not spread out all over Now, come on, Remley, let's get started Okay Uh, according to the directions, the first part I need is number 97 97! 97! Here it is in the kitchen Coming out! Thank you Now I need part 568 568 568 568 It's up here in the attic Coming down <laughs> uh, While you're up there Hand me part 2522 2522 2522 It's out here on the roof <laughs> I'll just reach out And Oh, oh. oh. 
Oh, my goodness. Now what happened? Uncle Billy fell off the roof. Oh. Look, uh, baby Alice. <laughs> hey, honey, run outside and pick up part 2,522 and bring it in. What about Uncle Will? Ain't nothing the directions about him. Let him lay. <laughs> Yeah, let's hurry and put this thing together. Game will be on in an hour. Let's see. Next thing I need is a uh, rotary condenser. That's part 256. Oh. 256! 256! 256! 256! Phil Harris, Alice Faye, November 26, 1950. The conclusion next on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the conclusion of the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, November 26, 1950. Philip, I've got a wrench sacroiliac. Sorry, we can't use it. <laughs> Look for a rotary condenser. Thanks very much. It's fine. Look, there are too many people trying to help. You all beat it. Leave this to Curly and me. Look, Curly. It's too much trouble running all over the house to get the parts. Let's do it systematically. Let's start at the beginning of the line and put the parts together as we come to them. Yeah, that'll do it. Well, let's get started. <laughs> we did it, Curly. We did it. Sure we did. And Alice thought we couldn't have silly girl. <laughs> there ain't nothing we can't do. Nah. Just look at it. Yeah. That's what I call a television set. Oh, ain't it a dandy? Oh, man. <laughs> She's a little spread out, but look at that cabinet we made. Yeah. Ain't that a thing of beauty? You see that slanted top? That gives it that streamlined effect. Hey, I brought the groceries. Hey, fellas, what's the idea of bringing that little house inside? <laughs> look, Julius. Why don't you leave it out in the back of the big house where it belongs? <laughs> Why don't you beat it, kid? I will, as soon as you verify a rumor that's been sweeping the country. What rumor? Is it true that Mr. Remley is the thing? Uh, no, no. No, he ain't. Now get lost while we try this television set that we just made. He's made a television set? Gee, there ain't nothing you guys can't do once the two of you put your mind to it. <laughs> you mean our minds, plural. I mean your mind, singular. <laughs> you jokes ain't got enough brains to fill up two heads. Ah, uh, yeah. Now there's a nice snappy retort. <laughs> Look, kid, I'll have you know we did a great job on this set. We haven't tried it yet, but I'll guarantee it'll work. This I gotta see. Okay, this you're gonna see. <laughs> hey, Remley. Huh? Crawl under the cabinet and turn the picture on. You got the controls under the set? That's so the kids can't mess around with it. Okay, the set's on, Curly, and it's working great. How can you tell? You got the screen under the set, too? <laughs> Of course not well, Where have you got it? I'm anxious to see it Look If you'll just step in the kitchen I'll show you the clearest picture you ever saw <laughs> How's the sound, Curly? I don't know I'll go in the dining room and listen <laughs> You got the controls in the den The picture in the kitchen And the sound in the dining room? <laughs> Fellas I don't like to be inquisitive, but what's in the bathroom? Alice. <laughs> Give me that line again, will you, boy? I don't like to be inquisitive. Don't huh? go that far back. Oh, Just... What's in the bathroom? Alice, she's taking a bath. <laughs> You got the controls in the den, the picture in the kitchen, the sound in the dining room. How can you turn it on, see it, and hear it at the same time? <laughs> Gotta be fast on your feet, kid. <laughs> hey, Remley, there's 
something wrong. I just looked in the kitchen. There's no picture on. I can't understand it. I thought it... <laughs> no wonder. I forgot to put the plug in. Oh, no. There, now it's on. Oh, look at those tubes light up. Yeah, look at that machine glow. Yeah, and look at the smoke coming out of it. <laughs> no, that's just one of them cigarette commercials. Oh, yeah, listen to your say. <laughs> Keep quiet, kid. I'm lucky I'm in one piece. Curly, you okay? Oh. Curly, oh. speak to me. Say something. Is there anything I can do for you, pal? Yeah. Hand me part 822. <laughs> What's that? My nose. It must be around here someplace. I can't... November 26, 1950, Phil Harris, Alice Faye on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, what has become an annual tradition? Beginning of the Cinnamon Bear, the Christmas cereal that was originally broadcast back in 1937. This episode, November 29th, 1937. <laughs> Cinnamon Bear. This is the story of the Cinnamon Bear and his very marvelous adventures with Judy and Jimmy Barton. But we can't very well meet the Cinnamon Bear until we meet Judy and Jimmy. They are twins, and they live in a big, old-fashioned house. At this very minute, they're in the upstairs sitting room. And from all I can hear, Judy and Jimmy are busily engaged in that very pleasant task of writing letters to Santa Claus. Let's listen. How are you getting along with your letter, Jimmy? Oh, pretty well. I guess I've got about everything down here. Now, don't go asking for everything the way you did last year. Oh, you girls are all alike. I bet you if we counted the things in your letter and the things in mine, you'd have the most. I bet you I wouldn't either. You would. Well, I won't argue about it. But I bet you my letter's more dignified than yours. Now, stop bothering me so I can finish it. Let me see. P.S. And Santa, there's just one thing more I'd like. A nice red V L. Well, that's not right. Jimmy, how do you spell velocipede? Uh, velocipede. Uh, V A. Oh, you're too old for a velocipede anyway. Uh, I guess maybe you're right. 
Judy, Jimmy. Yes, Mother. Right here, Mother. Have you finished those letters to Santa Claus yet? Uh-huh. Yes. That's good because we've something very important to do. What's that, Mother? What do you suppose I have in these cardboard boxes here? I know. Our Christmas tree ornaments. <laughs> yes. And you promised us we could help you go through them to see if any of them were broken. That's right. Oh, let's hurry, Mother. I can't wait. Just a minute. I'll put them right here on the table. Oh, boy. I hope that little pink Santa Claus didn't get broken. We'll see. Oh, oh. Aren't they beautiful? I'll say. I like those big gold ones specially. Everything seems to be pretty much in order. All the tinsel is here, the light. Everything seems to be here except... Uh... Except what, Mother? Well, I can't see the silver star anywhere. You mean the big one we always put way up on top of the tree? Yes, but I, I don't see it in any of the boxes. Oh, gee, Mom. I'd feel most awful if anything happened to that old silver star. Me yeah. too. Well, we've had it on top of our tree for years and years. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without the silver star. Now, don't cry, Judy. It's probably just misplaced. I remember Uncle Jed took some things up to the attic last year after Christmas. Perhaps he put it away up there. Could we go up and look for it, Mother? I don't like to have you running around in that old attic. You might get hurt. Besides, it's too cold. But, Mother, please, we've just got to find the silver star. And we have our sweaters on. All right. But you've got to promise to be careful and not stay too long. We won't, Mother. Honest, we won't. Where should we look first? If Uncle Jed put it away, it's probably in that big trunk in the corner by the window. Be careful you don't hurt your fingers when you open it. We'll be careful. Come on, Jimmy. Okay, here we go, up the stairs. Now, don't run, children. You, you might fall and get hurt. All right, Mother, dear. Last one up, the Freddy cat. <sighs> Gee, bullickers. They sure are steep stairs. Yeah. They're a lot steeper than Mary Louise has in her house. I bet these are the steepest stairs in the world. Sure they are. Whew. Here we are. I beat and you're a Freddy cat. You didn't either, Beat. I got here at the same time, and I'm not a Freddy cat. All right, then we both beat. Okay. But if we both beat, who is a Freddy cat? Oh, uh, Charlie Simpson's a Freddy cat. Yeah. Gee. There sure is a lot of stuff up in this attic. Yeah, just look at all those suitcases and boxes and things. Yeah, and there's that old spinning wheel and the music box and... Oh, Judy, there's the old trunk Mother told us to look in. Must be awful full of things. The top isn't closed all the way down. Well, you get on one side, Judy, and I'll get on the other. And then we can both lift at the same time. All right, Jimmy. <sighs> oh, gee, that was kind of heavy. Oh, look, Jimmy. There's one of those old crazy quilts right on top. Take it off and we'll see what's underneath. Okay. There. Mmm. Smells like mothballs, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Do you see the silver star any place? Uh-uh. Just a lot of old clothes and stuff. Let's lift this top thing out. Come on, Judy, help me. All right. <sighs> now, let's see. Say, here's a small box of ornaments. Uh, but they're all broken, Jimmy. And the silver star isn't there. Gee, here's one that's not broken. It's a pretty little airplane. It's made out of gold glass or something. We'd better take that downstairs with us. Why don't you put it someplace where it won't get broken? I'd better, I guess. I'll just set it on top of this old dresser here. Find anything else, Judy? You bet. Look at this, Jimmy. A little teddy bear with a green ribbon around his neck. Gee, he isn't any more than four inches high. I wonder where he came from. I don't know. Look, look what I found, Judy. A real honest-to-goodness telescope. Gee, isn't it a dandy? It's scrumptious. I bet that belonged to Uncle Jed when he was a sailor. I bet so, too. It sure is a wonderful telescope. When I look through it, everything seems a million times bigger. Boy, I bet if I was out on the roof, I could see clear over to England. Farther than that, maybe. You know what, Jimmy? What? This teddy bear is the teeniest one I've ever, ever seen. Sure is. Uh, say, Judy, I bet if we looked at him through this telescope, he'd be a lot bigger. Let's see, shall we? I'll lean him against the back of the trunk and you look. All right. Now, just wait till I get it fixed. Jiminy Crickets. What do you see, Jimmy? Willikers. He looks bigger than anything. Take a look, Judy. Let me see. Goodness. He is big, isn't he? Why, he looks almost as big as we are, only he really isn't. If you'd move over a little, Judy, we could both look at the same time. There. That's it. Can you see him? Plain as day. Judy. Judy, he moved. The bear moved. Didn't you see him moving? I thought I did, but... Sure he moved. 
gosh. Garage. Judy, listen. He made a noise. Maybe it was just a creaky board. No, it wasn't any creaky board. It was that bear. And I'm going to talk back to him. Oh, Jimmy, maybe you better head. Oh, don't get scared. He can't hurt you. He's really only four inches high. Hey, you, you teddy bear. Garo. Oh. Did you hear him, Judy? Did you hear him? He growled at me. Oh, he did, didn't he? Say, Jimmy, ask him if he's a really, truly live real bear. All right. Hey, teddy bear, tell us, who are you? I'm the cinnamon bear with the shoe button eyes And I'm looking for someone to take by surprise I go prowling and growling each night after dark But the folks say my growl's just a cinnamon bark Though I growl, Gara, And I growl, Garu My victims only say Oh, who's afraid of you? I'm the cinnamon bear with the shoe button eyes And I'm huffy and fluffy and tough for my size I devour lots of honey and cinnamon buns Just to make me ferocious, but nobody runs Now I'll growl, Garah. and I'll growl, Garoo and if you like to play, I'm much obliged to you. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful, Cinnamon Bear. Gala! <laughs> Jimmy, let's pretend we're really afraid, huh? It'll make him feel good. Oh, all right. Oh, don't give us a scare like that again, Mr. Bear. Gala! Oh, Judy, I'm scared. Garo! Oh, Jimmy, hold my hand tight. Sure, and... Did I really frighten you? Terribly. You just about scared the daylights out of us. Well, I promise not to frighten you anymore. That is, not until me ferocious nature gets the better of me again. Now, would you be kind enough to tell me your names? I always keep a record of the people I scare. I'm Jimmy, and I'm his sister, Judy. I'm much obliged to meet you, I'm sure. Me name's Paddy O'Sullivan. That sounds Irish. Uh, sure, I'm slightly Irish. That's why I wear this green ribbon around me neck. But tell me, what are you two doing up here? Well, we lost the silver star that goes on top of the Christmas tree. Have you ever seen it, Cinnamon Bear? The silver star? Did it have five points? I, well, I think so. Sure, I've seen it lots of times. Oh, show us where the silver star is, Cinnamon Bear. Oh, it's not here now. It's, it's gone. Gone? Oh, dear. What shall we ever do now? Oh, who took it? Why, the crazy quilt dragon, to be sure. Who is he? Oh, just a dragon. Not a very good one at that. He's terribly fond of shiny, bright things. Every day for the past month, he's been running into the trunk to admire the silver star. And this afternoon, it got the best of him, I guess. He just upped and ran off with it. <laughs> oh, now we'll never, never see the silver star again. Here, here, now, don't carry on like that. You can get the silver star back. <gasps> Well, maybe. How? By going after the crazy quilt dragon. Chase him. I'll help you. Will you really? Oh, sure I will. Crazy quilt's no great friend of mine. And besides, you were both very obliging and got perfectly terrified when I growled at you. Oh, you're the most wonderful cinnamon bear in the whole wide world. It's very nice of you to say it. Well, if we're going to catch up with the crazy quilt dragon, we better get going. Where do you think he went, Patty? Well, if I know Crazy Quilt, he probably headed for the Lollipop Mountains. The Lollipop Mountains? Well, how do we get there? You see that little hole in the wall by the music box? Yes. Well, we just pop right through there. Oh, but, Patty, Judy and I can't get through that little hole. Oh, yes, you can. It's very simple, really. All you and Judy have to do is degrow. What do you mean, degrow? Oh, huh? just degrow. Get smaller and smaller and smaller until you're only four inches high, like me. Gosh, we can't do that. <laughs> Why, it's impossible. Nothing's impossible. I can show you how to do it in a jiffy. Phew, that sounds most magical. Willikers, show us how, Patty. Quick. All right. Now listen very carefully. And I'll tell you how to degrow. Well, well. If the cinnamon bear can show Judy and Jimmy how to degrow until they're only four inches high, then as Judy says, it really will be most magical. And maybe they'll be able to catch the crazy quilt dragon and recapture their precious silver star after all. 
Anyway, be sure to listen next time and find out just how the cinnamon bear manages to make Judy and Jimmy only four inches high. The delightful Christmas children's cereal, The Cinnamon Bear, uh, from November 26th, 1937, here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Call, uh, contact Ted at radiomemories.com. He can supply the shows for you on cassette, CD, or flash drive for your computer. And he does lots of other shows, too. He restores all of them to the best quality possible. That's Ted at radiomemories.com. Also, thank this station, support their advertisers. It's their kindness and courtesy that allow us to be with you each and every time we roll around here on your favorite station and visit my webpage, classicradio.stream. There you can stream our shows on demand. You can learn about building a classic radio collection of your own. You can find a list of podcast sites where you can download our shows from. You can also find our social media links there. And you can also buy me a coffee. That buy me a coffee money helps us not only acquire additional classic radio collections to bring to you here on this program, but also allows us to uh, keep this show going and expand our reach. All of that at ClassicRadio.Stream. That is ClassicRadio.Stream. Thanks for making us a part of your day. Would you do me a favor and thank this radio station and support their advertisers? And as always, tell your friends, great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.